Hey, hey. Unexpected good morning to you. Now, I'll give everybody a chance to notice that I'm live, which I wasn't expecting to be, but there's a story behind it. It's a, it's a fine story. Um, but I figured that I would do an extra short. This is going to be like a half an hour TikTok live um, because I wasn't expecting to do a TikTok live. And even right now, as I'm seeing everybody t tuning in, I am quickly putting on some clear nail polish because I'm traveling and my, my um, nails are uh, just paper thin. It's okay, just like my skin. Um, so yeah, so good morning, everybody. Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing a TikTok live, but you know what? Um, I um, Some unexpected stuff happened and I'm being flexible about it and using my time in a way that feels good to me. And I gotta share with you that doing TikTok lives is one of the ways I like to spend my time. Um, I know what it's like to get a little, you know, dose of encouragement and you can do this, especially on a Monday morning, huh? Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, so I'm going to be here for like just the next half hour or so, but here's, here's the story. Here's why I'm tuning in live. So excuse me, I'm trying to hydrate. So as some of you know, cause you're on my mailing list, um, I am traveling for the next few days. Literally I'm traveling within hours of this. Um, I'm going out to, um, uh, Las Vegas, you know, chilly, chilly Las Vegas, a kid. And um, I'm going to get some coaching training. Um, I'm wicked psyched about it. And I was, my alarm was set for 5 a.m. this morning to go hop on my flight. Now, I was always feeling kind of hinky about this flight because I was using Frontier. And I've front, flown Frontier locally, but never for a long distance thing. And I was like, oh, you know what? I should have just spent the money on American. It's a business expense, yada, yada. And I didn't. And I'm like, okay, learn from this. Learn how my unease about the trip has kind of, you know, or the that trip, that um, flight has kind of been in the back of my mind, giving me a little bit of, oh, hey, good morning, bird. Um, a little bit of social anxiety, not social anxiety, just a little bit of eh. No lie. I was in bed last night and I heard my text go off at like 12.07. So I was like, okay, nobody texts me at 12.07. Long story short is my Frontier flight that was supposed to leave at like 7.30 this morning was not even just delayed, it was freaking canceled. And they're like, yeah, hey, sorry about it. Really, here's a, here's a little voucher, we can help you get it. But um, long story short is I thought at when I went to bed last night that I would be leaving at a 7.30 flight. Now, because I had to get up and um, rearrange it, I am on a 12 o'clock flight out to Las Vegas and not a direct one, but a, but a, but a connection. Now, I, I know this is all these details could be like, yeah, whatever, lady, but here's what I want to share with you, because I am a life coach. If we haven't met before, I am Beth. Um, I am a decluttering life coach, and my coaching is called Destination Decluttered. I share this with you because I am really proud of how I handled this, and I want you to be proud of how you handle unexpected situations, too, because... Of course, this threw me for a loop. I mean, I was in bed. I wasn't really asleep, but I was in bed and I was like, wait, what, huh? So that initial confusion of having a plan and then having it changed, of course, got me into like, wait, what, whatever, what the F mode. But then I decided, and because I've been doing this for so long, it was, it was fairly easy to say, okay, I could hang out in the drama and walk around and be like, you know, crap, crap, crap. I'm trying to edit myself. Like, F, 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 I can't believe this, I knew, I, I could have gone on a drama jag, but that would have cost me. That would have cost me time and energy. Now, I like to spend my time and I like to spend my energy doing things that make me feel better. So I realized, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be like, oh crap, okay. I said, hey, maybe this will give me an opportunity to not even fly Frontier, but to get onto American and then I can go to the lounge at the airport. So that's what I did. I got up, I opened up my suitcase, I took out my laptop, I sat in bed. My husband's like, what's going on? He was, he was working on some music in the other room. I explained the situation and long story short is, um, I got a later flight. It's a connector, yeah, but it's on American. And it's also helping me to not really kind of have to figure out what I was gonna do all day um, in uh, Las Vegas, which is so hot. So be flexible, stuff is gonna happen to you. Today, maybe. Something may happen unexpectedly to you. It did to me. And I want to encourage you. In that moment of, of change where you thought you were going this way and suddenly it went that way, you have a choice. 
you got a choice today and every day, but even just today, think about it. When something doesn't go your way, am I going to go your way? Like you're not hanging out with, um, with Lenny Kravitz, even though, oh my God, isn't that man just oh, gorgeous. If it doesn't go your way, how can you redirect it? How can you do something to make it feel better to you to get your way? Um, it was kind of cool. Now the neat thing is, is I'm thinking of all the benefits I have of having my flight canceled. Um, I got to fly on the carrier that I want. I get to show up with you guys for like a, a half an hour here in the morning. And who knows, depending on the traffic at the airport and how I am and if I get through security, maybe I'll pop in for another half hour TikTok live from the airport. I don't know. I share this with you to encourage you to be flexible. Being rigid and, and uptight and being like, it was supposed to go this way and it didn't go that way. Ah, Of course you're going to feel initially that disruption of having a plan, thinking it was going to go one way. But the more you can kind of course correct. This reminds me of, I don't know if you guys have ever driven on a, um, on like either, even just a highway maybe, but I always think of going over a bridge. I'm thinking specifically of the, what is it? The Del Mar, no, it's not the Del Mar Memorial. It's um, the St. George's Bridge, the new one, the like the Zakem looking bridge in Delaware. I know that's like a deep cut for people, but you're driving along and it's a sunny day and you know, not a cloud in the sky. And then for whatever reason, because air is magic, air is invisible. I could go off on my riff about air, but you're driving and all of a sudden, some it's like a gust of wind hits your car and you're like, whoa, what was that? Now, if you're not in control, you may veer off the side of the road. You may be like, oh, this totally, this totally derailed me, right? But the sooner you can recognize it, and because you're paying attention, you can kind of course correct, things will be more in your control. And when things are in your control, and hey, good morning, Christina. Yes, th when things are in more in your control, you can, you can ask yourself, my favorite, ask yourself that musical question, what do I want to happen here? What do I want? And when you hear what you want, then you can go for that. You know, you can, you know, you can get yourself back on track and maybe even on a better track. I am truly believing that I am psyched that my flight got canceled. I got that one totally refunded. I even got a credit for, for um, Frontier that I'll, I'll probably use on just a more local flight, like up to Boston to see my mother or something. And, um, I'm thinking it's it's all good, you know? I could bitch about it, but no, all sorts of wonderful things are happening. So speaking of that, enough about me and my kind of preamble and we the people and all that. We have a short amount of time here. We've got 22 minutes together before I do have to go inside and shower and stuff like that. I had this kind of nebulous amount of time. I did some dishes, I went on a walk, but I didn't want to really get into something. But how can I help you this morning? That's what I want to do is how can I use my brain my experience, my expertise, me, my me, to help you feel better about what you're doing in your life, even honesty, even if the life thing is too big. If, if it isn't too big for me, trust me, I swim in all areas of the pool, the shallow end, the middle end, the deep end. But even if it's like, I can't even, but maybe it's just we, we dip our toes in by talking about clutter, okay? I like to show up and help you because I know what it's like I know what it's like to not have somebody on your side, that you feel like you're all alone, that nobody is encouraging you, that everybody around you is like, wow, this sucks. Yep. Uh-huh. Oh, let me tell you what crappy thing happened to me today. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what happened to me that was crappy? <sighs> that can like just lower your vibe. If anything, maybe me just showing up and saying, you know what? You can do it. And whatever it, it is, I want you to believe you can do it. I didn't believe it for a long time and my life reflected it. I changed how I thought about stuff incrementally, not all at once. Trust me, it is a process. It takes time. But man, if you keep on doing a little bit at a time, it's like getting stronger. It's like losing weight. Everything happens a little bit at a time. We all want to. This is a funny thing that just occurred to me. We all want to um, win the lottery. We want to get the money all at once, easy peasy. It's much like I want to lose the 20 pounds all at once. I want everything to be solved all at once. I want my house to be cleaned and organized all at once. We all want that. I mean, seriously, I, me, me too, like no lie. However, I really find, and I'm being honest with you, the cooler way to do it is to go on the road trip to get it. 
to get to do all the things to, to teach yourself you can do the things to get what you want because then you realize you have the skills to do it like in so many areas of your life okay so yeah if you have a question if you've got something you want a little nubbins on little encouragement little um you know pep talk or problem solving um i'm here for you pop it in the comments um if not i can use this kind of like as a practice for me doing a podcast which i think i might do um because i know what it's like to i, I do and maybe you do too so how can i help you out this morning and here's the great thing when i ask you that i hope you are then asking yourself that and you're listening for your own answer because if you immediately say i don't know or i don't have time you're kind of putting up and even notice my body i get my body involved in my in my coaching all the time my body's like i can't even i can't even i don't have time this is too busy i'm too distracted okay Lily pad, I got rid of all the physical stuff, easy peasy. Body clutter is my issue. Are you talking about pounds? Because I'm talking about pounds. What do you consider body clutter? And even better, because it's probably like you're carrying around some extra stuff on your body. What did you do to get rid of the physical stuff? What was easy? What were, the, what were your easy ways getting rid of the physical stuff? I mean, excuse me, the physical stuff um, in your home. Like to me, I know when I have decluttered, and this is what I'm trying to apply to my own kind of health weight loss journey. Weight loss journey, oh, I feel like I'm in freaking Weight Watchers or who is that, Gloria Stevens back in the day. Deep cut, people, deep cut. Okay, you Marie kondo it all. Okay, so, so seriously, Marie Kondo always reminds me of, does this spark joy? Does this bring me joy or not? We need to think, this is how I'm going to think. When I go to eat something or drink something, does this, is this going to get me what my mom, does this make me feel good? And not just feel good in the short term, but this is, this is how I need to retrain my brain, is saying, does this make me feel good in the long term, the beginning and the long term? Because I'll be honest with you, like I love crunchy, salty, fried snacks. They make me feel good from about here to here. They make me feel good in the taste bud and crunching sensation. But after I have swallowed them, I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, that probably wasn't the best for me. And then my gut is like, you know, we really could use some vegetables down here. Right now, when I have something crunchy like a carrot, it's not usually my go to because I think because I've been trained back in my day of thinking of chips as a reward and good and carrots as a punishment and bad. I have to retrain how I think about how I eat. But when I realize I can eat a carrot, it will solve my hunger, it will be crunchy, and for the longer term, I will feel better, I will feel, feel more satiated. It's a lot of, I, I just, lily pad, I encourage you to think of what worked for you when you were decluttering your home. And just experiment with some of those things that may work for you when you go to declutter your eating habits. When you go to say, you know what? Getting exercise, moving my body isn't torture. I'm not working out with weights and being all whatever. Maybe I'll just go on a 10 minute walk this morning. Because what I am finding too, and this totally pertains to coaching and decluttering of any kind, is when you feel better physically, when you feel better up in your head, in your heart, in your belly, when you're feeling better physically, when you've gotten some rest, when you're having some water, when you do that, it makes a lot of things more easy. So this is the neat thing. The more good you treat yourself, the more you're gonna say, hey, this actually feels good. I'm not in denial in like some lame 70s diet. I am nourishing my body. I am bringing quality into my body, not quantity. And a lot of decluttering is talking about the quality of the things you have in your home versus the quantity, you know? So uh, user 8293 right above you is also offering, um, you know, try roasted edamame. Yeah, experiment with what works with you. You know, I have my certain go-tos that I actually have kind of started enjoying eating things that I used to always equate being on a, eating a salad as denial and you're too, like all sorts of, boy, like if I coached myself and I have done this, um, folding the piece of paper in half and writing down the, the unhelpful thoughts about what my food is like, I, I probably need to do that again soon. Um, realizing there is decades worth of unhelpful stuff in me about what it means to live in a human female body on this planet. But I encourage you, do something today, even if it's just one 
One more thing good, one less thing bad, just one. One extra glass of water. One, like when I go, seriously, you guys, when I go to the airport in like an hour or so, saying I'm gonna pick, eat, eat, I'm gonna pick healthy stuff when I go to the American Airlines lounge and I'm not going to be like, ooh, I'm here and I'm gonna have a mimosa and a bagel with cream cheese and it's gonna be a cream cheese on this one and a cream cheese on that one. I have done that before. I think this is the bagel and this is the bagel. I have done that before and it feels good short term because you're like, oh, this is such a treat. But then it can have a long term not feeling so good. Okay. Lily Pat, I hope that helps. And here I'm cheersing you with my water after doing even just a 10 minute walk. I know you can do this. I know I can do this. Okay. We're in this together. Okay. Bianca is actually asking, how do you plan your day and then keep yourself accountable to that plan? Wonderful. I have gotten really good at this and man, has it been a game changer. Um, I actually have done, and just a quick thing, I have done um, like workshops on this for the people on my mailing list and my clients. If you're interested in either of those, go to my website, destinationdeclutter.com. Um, sign up for my, my free mailing list. It's so funny, I got little birds here. They know I'm here. I guess I'm like a little Snow White action. Um, hey, hey guys. Hey, morning. Um, this is how I do it, okay? I use, and if it wasn't packed away, I would show it to you. I use a El Cheapo, I, I use an inexpensive spiral rebound notebook, and I also use my digital calendar. Calendar, did you hear me say that? That's funny, calendar. I use the both because I'm Gen X, so part of me grew up in a paper world, and I find it really helps me to physically write things down. It slows my brain down and my body down to allow the idea of me doing that to absorb, so I'm not just typing it and being like, oh yeah, that, uh-huh. I let it sink in. So this is what I do, Bianca, really quick. I will get a piece of paper and I will put on it, lined piece of paper, 6 a.m. and that'll skip a line, 7 a.m. skip a line, 8 a.m. skip a line, 9 a.m. skip a line, and I'll go all the way from about, the way my notebook is, from about six to nine. And then I will literally create, you know, I like to call it like a roadmap, and I will block time out. I will create a block of time. And I will say, okay, so for example, today, it takes, it's gonna take me, this is what I'll do, perfect example. I said, okay, I need to leave for the airport at this time. I, I'm here right now. What can I do that's gonna make me feel good between now and when I need to leave for the airport? Oh, well, I've got a half an hour. From eight o'clock to 8.30, I'll do a TikTok live. So if I had written this down, I would have written it down. 8.30, I will go inside and I will shower. Um, 8.30 to nine, I'd like to bank a half hour because it gives me leisurely. Okay, now it's gonna be nine o'clock. Then I'm gonna check and I will probably head out to the airport then. Now, a lot of this stuff is variable, so it's like, go to the airport, I'll check the thing, oh, should, that should take me about, an, you know, 40 minutes to an hour, okay, then I'm going to park my car, go in, and then I'm going to see, okay, between now and when I have to, to, to get on my plane, what lounges do I want to go to? Um, do I want to walk all the way down to, you know, Spirit and see if my, my bag fits in their carrier, you know, different things like that. I chunk it down, and I write it down. Now, some of this is very casual. That's why I write it down and I scribble things out. Um, and I hold myself accountable because everything I do, um, everything I do, I do it for you. Now, everything I do, I want to say, what do I get out of this? What's in it for me? What do I want? So good morning, German G. Schnauzer. Nice to see you. And then I kind of lather, rinse, repeat. Now, Gwen is asking where I'm going. I am going out to, oh my gosh, you guys, I think it's hot here in Pennsylvania. I'm going out to Las Vegas. I'm not going there for joy, but a man, will I make some joy that I will have a good time there. Do not worry about me. I, I can make fun. I can have fun wherever I am. Um, I'm going out for some coaching seminars. Um, it's a whole like, you know, two day thing I'm going to. So I will be in um, air conditioning. So, so that's where I'm going, but I keep myself accountable because I want to do these things. I'm doing the things like I did. Actually, it might help you, Bianca. I'll share with you. Um, Two of the videos, the most recent videos I did, because this came up to me on Saturday, videos here on my page on TikTok. And if you're watching the recording of this on YouTube, you can go to my TikTok page and find it, is when I decided to do a riff on a to-do list. And what I did was I ended up, I, I said, I don't even know how I'm gonna do this, but my brain, I trust my brain to come up with awesome ideas. And what it did was I made like kind of a square thing. Um, I, I did like a, a, a two columns and then I cut them in half. One column was to do, and the other one was like a wish list. And what I decided was everything that I wrote down that I had to do, I wanted to correlate that to something that was gonna be beneficial to me. Okay, so I did that on the top half. And then what I did was on, I, on the bottom half, I flipped it. I said, here's some things that are on my wish list, and what can I do today 
to uh, to add to my to-do list of to, to get me even incrementally there. Now, a lot of mine were about um, eating and taking care of myself and eating healthy th things and that type of thing. But man, did I, I write, wrote things down. And when I realized what I was doing was benefiting me, it got, it got me accountable. And then I also check my list. I cross things out. I remind myself. I keep track of things. Okay? I hope that helps. <laughs> Jelly Bee is saying, Beth is the best. True story. Facts. Hashtag facts. Okay? How do I hold myself accountable? By trusting myself. Now, this, by not discouraging myself. By making a promise to myself. And practicing keeping my promises to myself. When you write down a, a list of things to do, no matter how big or how small, part of you, a voice in you is saying, I want to do that, or I have to do that, or whatever it is. I want you to show up for yourself. I want you to say, if you want to go and take a walk, I want you to take a walk. I want you to see it, you know? Yeah. Reflection and writing down regarding habits. Yeah. You know? Okay, Carla. Oh, yeah, you have been. I hope you're feeling better, hon. I have been way under the weather. My physical has health, but have done a good deal of mental reflection and writing down regarding habits. Yes, it's an eye-opener when we realize how much our habits, and not just our external habits of, like, eating and moving, but our habits up here and our habits here. So I say this to all of you with, seriously, the love in my heart is practice keeping your, ha your, your promises to yourself. Learn to trust yourself that what you say you're going to do, you're going to do. Become a trustworthy person. Be worthy of your trust. I have gotten so good at this that, of course, there's going to be a few things. Like, there's totally this thing that I'm just letting hang over my head because I know I can get it done, but whatever. But for the most part, like when I did this whole to-do list over the weekend, I got 99% of it done and it felt good. And I did it at a pace that worked for me. Yes, and I love this, Carla. Oh, it delights me when you say this. She says, it was almost as eye-opening as the physical movement. Yes, you guys, you don't even, we, I didn't even realize how much my thoughts were affecting my life. My thoughts about money, about success, about going for what you wanted, about um, living in a house that wasn't a, you know, a, you know, traditional New England colonial about not working in an office, you know? Yeah, if you are a pen and paper girl, Bianca, and I am too, I work the both because sometimes I don't have pen and paper and my brain has so many good ideas that I also talk text my ideas to myself so I remember them, but I talk text them into an app, it's called Trello, so that it makes a list and then when I am, then I go back and I read what I do. I, I go back and see the insights. I, my brain is telling me what I want, you know? Um, and if you're a pen and paper person, by all means, use the tools that work with you, that you already know you have, you are accustomed to that work for you. That's why I am kind of a hybrid. That's why when I coach, I will never, I will suggest what works for me and other clients, but I, tr I want you to trust yourself to say, if it works for me to write things down and cross things out, then I'm going to write things down and cross things out because it works for me. Okay. And here's the thing I love, Bianca, especially because you mentioned the ADHD. A lot of times with ADHD, because I, I think I've got a strain of it because it, people in my family have it and I coach people with it and I know people with it, it's rapidity. Our brains move so fast. It's like this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Whoosh. Slowing down that brain. Not shutting it up, just slowing it down. And part of slowing down the ADHD brain can be to say, okay, I get it, I get it. Hold on, I'm going to write all this stuff down. And then you just write that stuff down. And then... Your brain isn't like, oh, I have to remember all this stuff because you have a list now in front of you. And these lists don't have to be always your daily to-do list. I have a list of places I want to travel. I mean, think about it, you guys. Think about a list of things that you've done. Do you save videos here on TikTok, ones that you like, you kind of bookmark them? Do you ever go back and look at your bookmarks? You would be it would be interesting to see the, the things that are on your bookmarks. What do they represent about you and what you want and what you think is a cool idea? I bookmark recipes and I share them with my husband. We ate two things yesterday that I got on TikTok, that I saw on TikTok. This morning I was up wicked early because I was supposed to wake up for my flight and I, I just am an early riser anyway. I bookmarked a lot of things about traveling internationally in business and first class, laying down seats and stuff like that. I also bookmarked a lot of things that, you know, kind of filled my cup. Okay. 
So notice these things that work for you, but also reflect on them. Don't just write things down. Don't just set it and forget it. You're not there yet. When your habits are good, you can kind of set it and forget it. I know Ron Popeil, right? Thank you for letting me take a moment there. I realized I've took some, medi not medicines, like supplements, fiber and uh, things that I burped up a little bit. I know, TMI, but I, that's why I want to do that. Michelle, I love it. Cleared my hall closet to move my board games out of my living room. Two spaces. Yes, notice how sometimes it will have a multiple, decluttering is a multiple effect. Rock on, lady. Okay. Um, I am outside on my patio. Um, my little, actually, one, two, three, four. It's a, it's a modest patio. I'm looking right out on my driveway, but I love it. Um, and, um, yes, the brain can let go and give you peace. And you guys, I'm only going to be here for another four minutes because I do have to go in the house and shower and go to the airport. But I want to share this with you. Decluttering gives you peace of mind. Peace in your mind. And this, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? If instead of hearing that constant chatter of I have to do this, I have to do this, I need to declutter, where is that thing? I don't know, I'm running late. You just took a deep breath and you're like, ah, oh, check it out. I can hear those birds. I can hear that plane going by and that's going to be me up there soon. You know, I do this. I show up in your life to remind you that decluttering is a way that you can feel better in your body, in your life in your nervous system, in your head. I teach it that way because that's how I want to feel. That's the end result for me. Everything I do, I do it for you. I do it so I feel better. My life is easier because when I feel better, I do better too. I do better not just for me, I do better for you. If I was feeling crappy, I might still be in bed. I might be like, oh, I feel like crap. I'm gonna just scroll on TikTok. Screw those people. I got to take care of myself. I can't deal with them. I've been there. I have decided to do something else. And I feel so good. I'm like, I've got all this free time now because my house, I have very little to declutter and it's so easy to maintain that now I get to show up and help you do it too. Because why should I be the only person who lives the life they love? I want you to do it too. Okay? If you want to though. Here's the great thing. This is all in your control. You're the driver. You're the driver. You decide where you're pointing your car today. You decide, here, I'm giving you the key. Somebody said this on a TikTok live the other day, and I love the analogy. You gave me the key. Here's the key to your car. Ignite the spark in your heart, and then as you're sitting there, even the thing that's gonna ignite the spark is by looking through your windshield saying, I know I've, I've, I've done that in the past. I'm looking through my rear view mirror. I'm seeing what worked and what didn't. I'm learning from it. But right here, when I'm in the driver's seat looking through in the windshield, where do I wanna go? What do I want to do? Maybe you haven't even thought about that yet, but sitting down and writing it down can be eye-opening. I know I'm going to do a lot of reflection on this in a couple of weeks because A, my birthday is coming up, and B, I have a book that I, my clients know about this, I have a book that I write down all the good stuff every single day. I've done this for four years, people, and I'm about to start a new book. And so I want to reflect on what were the things that four years ago I wanted to happen and what has, and I want to congratulate myself and what's there that is still important to me now and I want to make it happen. You know, <laughs> I love it. I have parked at your airport, Beth, taking off to my good destination. There you go. And you know, here's a wonderful thing. Decluttering makes you travel light. Decluttering makes it easy for you to pack. Yesterday was packing was effortless. I knew the right amount of clothes, they were clean. I put them in my little packing cubes. Um, it felt easy. When I drive through the, when I walk through the airport today as an international traveler with just these two little bags next to me, and I'm only, not going to international, I'm just going to Vegas, but like it's gonna feel good to travel light, that I'm not lugging all this stuff around me for fear I might need it. I trusted myself when I, when I packed. I trust that I brought enough clothes and everything's gonna be fine. And if I need something, I can buy it, but I probably won't even need it. That allows me to not go like, okay, I might need this and I might need that, and here's my umbrella and here's my parka. No, when you learn that you're gonna be okay with less, the right amount for you, you will, you will be light all across the board. 
and it does free you little by little, GGX2000. And I really think, because I gotta sign off now, but I just wanna leave you with this. I truly believe that the incremental way, the little by little, the baby steps is so important because it is the way that you expand your nervous system is you stretch it a little bit and you stretch it a little bit and you stretch it a little bit and you stretch some more and you stretch some more and you stretch some more. Then suddenly you have a bigger um, comfort zone but you need to do it incrementally. If you try to push it all at once, it's like a much muscle, it's gonna hurt and you're gonna not do it. But if you do it stretchy, 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 then it's more likely to stay that way and you know what to do to keep your nervous system calm. And look at me, I'm doing freaking patio tai chi, okay? Yes, notice the all or nothing doesn't get you all, it typically gets you nothing. Yeah, okay? Now, I have to go, you guys, because seriously, birds and planes, in airports, that's me. I might check in with the airport, I don't know, but if I if I don't, I'm wishing you all the best. I'm going out to Vegas to become a better coach, but even this coaching I have, I freaking love, and I wanna help you with it. So um, that's why I showed up. Use what I have given you for good, okay? And I will see you later, okay? Bye, bye. Oops, hitting the wrong button, as I always do. <laughs>